<laughs> it's been about two and a half years since I built this rig. And I built it primarily for high resolution simulations and renders done in Houdini software. Tonight, I'm going to be maximizing this build, getting the most bang for the buck and taking it to its full potential. I'm in the process of doing high quality level visual effects scenes that have to do with water and oceans and high speed boat chases and waterfalls and white water and floods for my movie. In order to do that, I use Side Effects Houdini software. It's the undisputed king at simulations as well as effects in the visual effects industry. And what's great about Houdini is that not only is it procedural based, which means that the visual effects artist gets full control of everything in the scene, thanks to all the different nodes that are all connected with one another. But even more importantly than that, it's multi-threaded, which means that it uses all the cores and threads within the little CPU. The more the cores, the faster the clock speed of the cores, the faster the machine will be at mulching through all those simulations in the big scenes. Back when I built this rig, the Threadrippers and Epic CPUs were still not quite up to par for what I was looking for. So I went with an alternative setup. So I went with this server board here because it has two Xeon CPU sockets. I was impressed with this server board because it has support for up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM memory which is very important simulations. Up until now, I've been using only one CPU and 128 gigabytes of RAM in this rig. Since then, I've learned and improved my skill set with large simulations in Houdini. And now I need more power, more speed, more memory RAM and storage for these huge cache files that I'm cooking. This Xeon CPU in here has 20 cores and it's hyper-threaded, which means it has 40 cores. Today, I'm gonna to be adding the second CPU, which will bring it to a total of 80 cores. Now I'm using older Xeon CPUs and their clock speed is only 2.2 gigahertz. So they aren't as fast as the new Threadrippers or Epic CPUs. But after working with this rig for three years now, I've noticed that with working with this many cores, it doesn't make much of a difference in my workflow. When I cook a water simulation with large water scenes, I start off with low res particle size to see how the simulation would look. Then once I'm happy with it, I'll bring down the particle size of the droplets, which means taking it to real world scale droplets, which really means high resolution. Even in the most demanding scenes where I've had flip tanks with white water that are about 300 meters by 300 meters, I've never waited longer than about two days or so. So if you're interested in knowing more about my workflows for large water simulations, I'll have more videos on that coming up soon. So hit that subscribe button if you're interested. So adding this new CPU tonight will certainly speed up my workflow for even the most strenuous scenes that I'm going to be throwing at it. I was actually going to be building a new rig based around the AMD Threadripper 3990X, which is a 64 core hyper threaded, which means it's really 128 cores and those cores go up to 4.3 gigahertz of speed. Now, yes, that is very impressive and it's very fast, fast clock speed. It's almost twice as fast as these ones. And it may be worth $5,000 to some people, but the major problem with that for people like me is that it only supports 256 gigabytes of RAM memory. For people like me, that's like saying, here are the keys to my Lamborghini and you can go as fast as you want, but rather than get a quarter mile, 400 meter racetrack, you only get a quarter of that, which is 100 meters. So you can see how it's just really a tease and it's not functional at all for big scenes and big simulations, which is what I do. Because memory RAM is a very big deal when it comes to simulations, especially for whitewater and its derivatives like spray or foam or mist, especially when they're based on volumes, which consume much more memory RAM on any operating system, whether that's Linux, Windows or Apple. So it makes absolutely no sense if you're going to have all that speed, all that clock speed for all those cores, but you can't make large simulations because the simulation will simply crash when it caps out of RAM memory after just a few frames into the simulation. You now, back in July, 2020, AMD announced their solution to this issue with the release of the Threadripper Pro 3995WX. 
It's basically the same CPU, however, it supports up to two terabytes of RAM memory. Now, that is a lot of RAMs, and that's what I'm talking about. But the only problem with that is that AMD is only selling those CPUs through its OEM manufacturers, which means we can't buy it for DYIers like myself. If I wanted to buy one of those, I would have to buy an entire workstation from Lenovo that wouldn't be ready until the fall and would most likely be overvalued and overpriced. Now, there is another option that I can do, which is the AMD Epic CPUs that are similar in capacity and specs as a Threadripper Pro 3995WX. But again, it's the same issue with those. Those are not sold to do-it-yourselfers like myself, and it usually comes in workstations by one of their manufacturing partners. Now, I did find some online, but they come pre-installed in the motherboard, and they are still overpriced by at least several thousand dollars. So after evaluating my workflow and what I have right now in my current rig, what I need or what I want to upgrade to, what's available in the market, and weighing the opportunity cost of all these different options, it just makes so much more sense to maximize my current rig and take it to its full potential. After all, these are not very expensive anymore. Adding more cores, adding more memory, adding more storage, even if these cores are at a lower clock speed, I still benefit greatly. So unless you've got about 10 or $15,000 to burn on an AMD Epic CPU pre-installed on a server board by one of its partner manufacturers, it would be much smarter and you'd get much more computing power for your money to go with an alternative like this or something similar to this. For me, this setup still seems to be that sweet spot in terms of bang for the buck and these older refurbished Xeon CPUs can still be found on eBay for a really good price. Again, their clock speed is a little bit lower than the Threadripper Pro or the Epic, but it won't be a big difference in speed to your workflow. Now, the other really great thing about this less expensive alternative is that if and when I decide to build a new rig with the latest AMD Epic CPUs, I can still use this older rig as a node for the start to my tiny home render farm because Houdini allows us to use three computers, which are called nodes, to use as a render farm for distributed simulations and renders without the cost of those heavy licensing fees. So here's the additional components that I'm gonna be installing today. First thing is this right here. This is the identical CPU that's already in here. It's the Xeon E5 2698V4. It's got 20 cores that are hyper-threaded, which means 40 cores. I've also got the Cooler Master to keep it nice and cool. There's 192 gigabytes of memory RAM in here, that's DDR4, and also the 16 terabyte 3.5 internal drive that I'm gonna be installing as well. So enough talk, let's get to work. Added in the second CPU along with the water cooler on top of it, six new additional RAM sticks, and the storage drive. Now for thermal cooling, I know I could have gone with something really cool looking like a water cooled unit, but the thing is that one, it's a lot of work, two, it's a lot of maintenance, three, it's really risky in case of a malfunction or an accident that could happen, four, it's much more expensive. And these block coolers that I have on the CPUs here are much more reliable. And also the whole idea, which is to maximize what I already have as efficiently and inexpensively as possible. So this is me applying the paradox of the more you do with less, the more you get out of it. As far as aesthetics go, I know this is a very ugly machine and it needs a new look, one that it really deserves. Don't worry, that's coming too. The new NVIDIA RTX 3000 series GPUs are coming out. And I'm gonna take this rig a whole few steps further and make it a very powerful render beast with the new GPUs. 
The new ones are much bigger than ever before. The Founders Edition takes up three PCI slots on the motherboard. So what we're going to be seeing is brand new, very large cases come out from partnering manufacturers that will be able to house these new GPUs. So for now, doing any upgrades or any updates to any of the lights or the fans or anything aesthetic for optics, I'm not doing any of that because it's very likely that I'll be moving the whole system into a much bigger case in a few weeks time. And I'm gonna go further into detail about rendering on the GPU technology. And I promise I will give this a nice look, one that it actually deserves. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Until next time, peace.